The man known as the Thunderbolt due to his rapid expeditions and conquests. He was the leader under whom the Ottomans besieged Constantinople for the first time and whose existence made European leaders tremble. He repelled a crusade and forced the Hungarian Empire to kneel before his might. He crushed all anti-Ottoman Turkoman opposers but faced defeat at the hands of another Muslim, under whose ambitions his might and magnificence were pillaged. His falling created a long period of instability within the Ottoman Empire. We are talking about Sultan Bayezid Han Yildirim I. So, without any further delay, let's delve into the details. Son of Murad I and his Greek wife, Gulchicek Hatton, Bayezid was born in 1360, Bayezid I had at least six consorts, eight sons and five daughters. His political journey commenced around 1381 through his marriage to the daughter of the Emir of the German Ogulari Emirate, a Turkoman principality in Western Asia Minor. This union brought parts of the Germanid lands under Ottoman control, and Bayezid assumed the role of Prince Governor of Katahia, safeguarding the Eastern Ottoman territories. His responsibilities included confronting the Karamans, a formidable Anatolian Turkoman emirate that resisted Ottoman suzerainty, viewing themselves as heirs to the Seljuks of Rum. Despite dynastic marriages being a common tool for Ottoman diplomacy, such as Aladdin Bey marrying Bayezid's sister, they didn't always ensure subservience. In 1386, when Aladdin Bey expanded into Ottoman-claimed territories, Sultan Murad I took military action. The ensuing battle near Ankara in late 1386 earned Bayezid the nickname Yildirim, or Thunderbolt, for his valor. Although Aladdin Bey avoided significant losses, the Karaman challenge persisted until the late 15th century when their territory was fully absorbed into the Ottoman Empire. After Murad's death at the Battle of Kosovo on June 15, 1389, Bayezid ascended to the Sultanate. To prevent any potential challenges to the throne, he ordered the execution of his only surviving brother, Yakub. The battle itself bolstered Ottoman influence in the Balkans. With the demise of Serbian Prince Lazar during the conflict, Lazar's son, Stephen Lazarevic, became an Ottoman vassal and was compelled to marry his sister, Oliveira, to the new Sultan. However, the Ottoman victory at Kosovo also raised concerns in Hungary, as it meant sharing a border with the Ottomans for the first time, alerting Hungary to the growing regional power of the Ottomans. This development marked a significant shift in the geopolitical landscape, prompting strategic considerations and preparations among neighboring powers. The aftermath of the Battle of Kosovo stirred reactions among the Anatolian Turkoman Emirates, seizing the opportunity to reclaim former territories in Anatolia amid the absence of Ottoman forces. In a swift campaign during the winter of 1389-90, Bayezid expanded Ottoman control by annexing several western Anatolian emirates, including Aydin, Saruhan, Jermian, Mentiz, and Hamid. His focus then shifted towards Karaman, where he besieged Konya, the emirate's capital in present-day south-central Turkey. However, Bayezid faced challenges from former allies like Kandaraglu Suleiman Bey of Kastamonu, who aligned with Kadi Buraneddin Ahmed of Shivas against him. This forced Bayezid to abandon the Konya siege and confront these adversaries. In 1392, Bayezid emerged victorious, defeating and killing Suleiman Bey and absorbing his territories into the Ottoman realm. Other regional rulers, including the ruler of Amasya, also acknowledged Ottoman suzerainty during this period. Despite these successes, Bayezid's dispute with Qadi Buraneddin persisted until 1398, underscoring the complexities of consolidating Ottoman authority in Anatolia amidst shifting alliances and regional dynamics. The Ottoman military ventures in Anatolia had unintended consequences, empowering distant Christian adversaries of the Sultan. The Byzantines, compelled to ally with Bayezid in Anatolia, sought to resolve their internal conflicts in hopes of uniting and garnering support from Western Christian powers to halt Ottoman territorial expansion. However, this strategy backfired, leading to a prolonged Ottoman siege and blockade of Constantinople from 1394 to 1402. To secure control over the Bosporus Strait, Bayezid ordered the construction of a castle, now known as Anadolu Hazari or the Asian Castle, strategically positioned on the Asian shore, just north of Constantinople. This fortress played a crucial role during the eventual Ottoman conquest of Constantinople in 1453. Despite these efforts, Bayezid's forces were unable to capture Constantinople as he had to redirect his focus to simultaneous conflicts in Europe and Anatolia, necessitating the abandonment of the siege. 
This dynamic highlights the intricate challenges faced by the Ottoman Empire during Bayezid's reign, balancing territorial ambitions with strategic limitations. While Bayezid grappled with internal conflicts against Muslim and Turkoman adversaries in Anatolia, his frontier lords initiated raids in the Balkans, sparking retaliatory actions from Hungary. These tensions led to periodic Ottoman raids into southern Hungary starting from 1390. The situation escalated in 1392 when Hungarian forces crossed the Danube River, their natural southern boundary, resulting in clashes with Ottoman troops. In 1393, Bayezid's conquest of Ternovo marked the annexation of Tsar Ivan Shishman's Danubian Bulgaria, with Shishman becoming a vassal under Bayezid's authority in Nikopol. These victories prompted King Sigismund of Luxembourg to expand Hungarian influence northward into Serbia, parts of Bosnia, and the Romanian principalities of Wallachia and Moldavia. This strategic maneuver aimed to establish Hungarian client states as a buffer between Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. Bayezid further solidified Ottoman control by intervening in Wallachia, deposing the pro-Hungarian ruler Mircea and installing his vassal, Vlad, in 1394. Subsequently, in the spring of 1395, Ottoman forces launched another raid into southern Hungary and, in June, captured Nikopol, leading to the execution of Tsar Shishman. King Sigismund of Luxembourg, in response to the escalating tensions, intervened in Wallachia and reinstated Mircea as his protégé in July-August 1395. However, Mircea's position remained precarious. By the summer of 1396, King Sigismund, who had been planning a crusade since 1392, assembled an international army to confront the Ottoman threat. This crusade garnered support from various influential figures, including the Pope, the Duke of Burgundy, and certain French nobles. The Byzantine Emperor Manuel II Paleologos, facing an Ottoman blockade in his capital, sought assistance and urged the crusade, with his envoys visiting Hungary in January 1396. Around 30,000 to 35,000 crusaders from Hungary, Wallachia, France, and Burgundy converged on Nikopol by September, laying siege to the city. However, lacking proper siege artillery, they were caught off guard when Bayezid's relief army of 40,000 to 45,000 men arrived. The battle on September 25th, some sources mention September 28th, saw Bayezid's forces emerge victorious, attributed in part to the premature attack by the French vanguard and the strategic intervention of Serbian heavy cavalry within Bayezid's army. This cavalry charge weakened the already struggling Hungarians, primarily targeted by Bayezid's Anatolian light cavalry. King Sigismund narrowly escaped the battle, fleeing to Constantinople via the Danube and the Black Sea. In Constantinople, he met with Emperor Manuel II Paleologos before returning home aboard Venetian ships. Post-battle, Bayezid seized Vidin from Tsar Ivan Stratsimir, who had aligned with the Crusaders, effectively ending the last independent Bulgarian Tsardom. The following years witnessed Bayezid's return to Anatolia, where he achieved significant victories by defeating and eliminating his two primary adversaries in the region, Aledin Bey of Karaman and Kadi Buraneddin of Shivas. These conquests expanded Bayezid's territorial control as he absorbed their lands into his growing realm. Concurrently, the Byzantine Empire's support for the anti-Ottoman crusade led to a tightening of the Ottoman blockade around Constantinople. Despite a small relief army led by Jean Boussacot, the Marshal of France, reaching the city via the Bosporus, it proved insufficient to break the siege. The escalating tensions prompted Emperor Manuel II Paleologos to embark on a journey to Western Europe personally, seeking substantial military and financial aid. However, upon his return in 1403, Constantinople's salvation was not attributed to Western assistance, but rather to Timur's decisive victory over Bayezid. Thirty years before these events, Tamerlane had initiated a series of campaigns that spanned from China to Iran, ultimately leading to a significant confrontation at Ankara, particularly concerning to the Ottomans. Viewing himself as Genghis Khan's successor and inheritor of the Seljuk, Ilkhanid territories in Anatolia, Tamerlane positioned himself advantageously to exploit the divisions among the independent local dynasties. Meanwhile, Bayezid's expansion into these same territories, marked by the Ottoman seizure of Shivas following the murder of its emir Qadi Boran al-Din Ahmad in the summer of 1398, brought his and Tamerlane's spheres of influence into direct contact in eastern Anatolia. In a bold assertion of his autonomy from Tamerlane, Bayezid sought recognition from the caliph in Cairo as the Sultan of Rum, a title historically held by the Seljuk sultans of Anatolia. 
Tamerlane, however, demanded Bayezid's acknowledgement of his suzerainty, to which Bayezid staunchly refused. The chief of the Akoyanlu White Sheep, Turkoman Tribal Confederation, responsible for Qadi Boran Aldin's murder and based in Diyarbakir in southeastern Anatolia, sought Tamerlane's support. In response, Tamerlane launched his longest expedition yet in 1399, extending over seven years. During this period, Bayezid found himself swayed by his ally Sultan Ahmad Jalir of Baghdad and the leader of the Karakoyunlu Black Sheep, Turkoman Tribal Confederation, centered around Van in eastern Anatolia. Together, they advocated for a campaign aimed at capturing several Mamluk strongholds located west of the Euphrates. While this endeavor saw some degree of success, it notably antagonized Tamerlane, marking a pivotal moment in their escalating tensions. In the summer of 1400, as Bayezid was preoccupied with the siege of Constantinople, Tamerlane capitalized on the situation by seizing control of Shivas. He then proceeded to advance southward along the Euphrates, penetrating Mamluk territory and reaching as far as Damascus before redirecting his focus towards Azerbaijan. This strategic move underscored Tamerlane's formidable presence and further intensified the power struggle in the region. Tamerlane's and Bayezid's armies converged near Ankara on July 28, 1402. Tamerlane commanded a formidable force of approximately 140,000 soldiers, while Bayezid's army numbered around 85,000 troops. Notably, Tamerlane's army included the disgruntled former rulers of the Western Anatolian Emirates, such as the deposed emirs of Aydin, Saruhan, Mentiz, and Jermian. These exiled leaders sought refuge at Tamerlane's court, having lost their territories to Bayezid's expansion. In contrast, the subjects who once owed allegiance to these emirs were now part of Bayezid's forces, following his command. Bayezid's army comprised a diverse array of soldiers, with his cavalry and infantry forming the corps. The infantry included Genissaries, known as Yenissari in Turkish, which translates to New Force. This infantry corps originated during Sultan Murad I's reign, initially composed of prisoners of war from the Balkans. Bayezid further strengthened the Genissaries through the Divsirm levy, recruiting youths from his Balkan Christian subjects to ensure a reliable source of manpower. Additionally, Bayezid's forces included notable allies such as his vassal Stephen Lazarevic of Serbia and Vlachs from recently conquered Thessaly. Support also came from groups referred to as Tatars, estimated at 30,000 men from White Tartary, as recounted by Johann Schiltberger, who witnessed the battle and became Tamerlane's captive. However, recent assessments suggest that these Tatars might have been Turkoman tribesmen from eastern Anatolia, adding complexity to the composition of Bayezid's diverse army. The battle unfolded throughout the day, characterized by both armies adopting similar formations. The rulers positioned themselves at the center, surrounded by infantry, notably Bayezid's genissaries, while their cavalry secured the flanks. An early first-hand account, recounted by a Cretan who fought alongside Bayezid but later fled, sheds light on the dynamics of the conflict. Bayezid's army consisted of 160 companies. Initially, Timur's forces managed to rout four of these companies. Among the commanders of these companies were Tami Kozafero Morchesbay, Firas Bey, a prominent Muslim leader, Bayezid's son, Prince Suleiman, and the son of Count Lazaro, Stephen Lazarevic. However, one of these companies belonged to Bayezid himself. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Bayezid's men displayed remarkable courage, confusing Timur's troops who believed their leader had been defeated. Timur, seizing the opportunity, swiftly dispatched 100,000 soldiers to encircle Bayezid and his group. Consequently, Bayezid and two of his sons were captured, while only six of his companies actively participated in the battle, with the rest choosing to flee. Ultimately, Timur emerged victorious from the confrontation. Tamerlane's army arrived at Ankara first and set up camp near a stream, strategically depriving Bayezid's troops and their horses of water. This move by Tamerlane's forces, coupled with the deployment of 32 trained elephants, is said to have included the use of the legendary incendiary agent of Greek fire against the Ottoman army, possibly contributing to the ensuing confusion. Despite initial belief in victory, Bayezid found himself encircled and ultimately defeated. Ottoman chroniclers attribute Bayezid's loss not only to Tamerlane's tactics, but also to the desertion of many of his troops, including the Tatars and soldiers from Western Anatolian Emirates. 
As a result of the Battle of Ankara, Bayezid and his son Musa were captured, along with possibly his Serbian wife and another son, Mustafa. His remaining sons, Isa, Suleiman, and Memd, fled the battlefield. This defeat marked a rapid downfall for Bayezid, undoing his previous conquests that had extended from the Danube to almost the Euphrates. Ottoman territory shrunk significantly, reverting to the boundaries set by his father in 1389. The prolonged blockade of Constantinople also came to an end. Tamerlane not only restored lands to emirs of various Anatolian regions but also solidified his control over the remnants of Bayezid's domains through a year-long period of raiding and pillaging. When chroniclers recounted Bayezid's defeat at Ankara, they delved into the factors behind the Ottomans' downfall. Asik Pasizade, a 15th-century chronicler, squarely blamed Bayezid for the disaster, labeling him a debauchee, an opinion shared by his contemporaries. Asik Pasizade also pointed fingers at Bayezid's Serbian wife, accusing her of influencing his drinking habits. Additionally, Bayezid's vizier Kandarli Ali Pasha was criticized for associating with dubious religious figures. Tamerlane's victory was profoundly humiliating, but what weighed heavily on later generations was the power struggle among Bayezid's sons to ascend the throne. With Prince Musa and possibly Mustafa in Tamerlane's custody after the Battle of Ankara, Suleiman, Memd, and Issa swiftly sought alliances to bolster their claims to rulership. Another son, Yusuf, sought refuge in Constantinople, where he converted to Christianity and took on the name Demetrius. In European folklore, stories of Bayezid's captivity under Tamur abound, depicting him as chained and subjected to extreme humiliation. Allegedly, he was forced to watch as his wife, Oliveira, served Tamur at dinner, with various versions detailing his treatment, including being used as a support under Tamur's legs or placed under the table where bones were thrown at him. Different narratives also surround Bayezid's death, with some suggesting suicide either by hitting his head against his cell bars or taking poison, although these claims are disputed. The first references to disrespectful treatment towards Bayezid appear in later works by authors like Ibn Arab Shah and Constantine of Ostravica, although literary historians like H.A.R. Gibb suggest that such descriptions may be embellished for dramatic effect. Memd Neshri's account introduces the idea of a cage, where Tamur ordered Bayezid to be placed, while later legends, such as those in Pope Pius II's work and Theodore Spandown's writings, expand on the theme of Bayezid's captivity, including tales of public humiliation of his wife. Contrary to these dramatic accounts, contemporary sources like Johann Schiltberger and Jean Tu Lumenger, who witnessed Bayezid's captivity, do not mention a cell or violent death. Clavijo, another contemporary, also omits such details. Sheriff Adin Yazdi's account presents a respectful treatment of Bayezid by Timur, mentioning that his son was brought to him upon request and his wife was sent to join him, with rumors that she converted to Islam under Timur's influence. To everyone's amusement, it is also reported that Timur cried upon hearing the news of Bayezid's demise from many of his personal and foreign sources. Historical records suggest that Bayezid passed away in March 1403 in Axahir, a town in west-central Anatolia. To everyone's amusement, this fact is also mentioned in a lot of sources that Timur, himself cried when he heard about Bayezid's demise. His body was initially preserved in the tomb of a Seljuk holy man, later moved to Bursa by his son Musa with Tamerlane's permission, and finally buried in 1406 according to Suleiman's tomb inscription. Several decades later, Byzantine historian Daukas claimed that Bayezid's grave was desecrated by Aladdin of Karaman's son as revenge for Bayezid's actions against his father in 1397. His death sparked a decade-long civil war and a continuous absence of peace and prosperity within the Ottoman Empire, as his sons competed with each other in every possible manner to gain control of the state's business. This period, which started with the death of Bayezid in 1403, lasted up to 1413, known as the Ottoman Interregnum. So that's all for today's episode. See you in another one until then. Allah Hafiz.